Thank you for the overwhelming positive response with Throne Mechanics Part 1. Uh, this ends up being Throne Mechanics Part 2 because some of the questions that were asked from the first video series blends right into this. And you're going to see that I don't really have any new mechanics to go over with you, just some variables for you to consider. There were two questions that really stood out that we're going to address today. One, does heal up or heal down playing influence your back? And part two, does where you put your weight on the throne influence your back? Ultimately, you're going to see that it's going to come back to the same active range of motion variables. So if you haven't watched video one, I would suggest go watching that before we watch this video. Like we talked about in the previous video, you're going to have some variability as to how high or how low you can set the throw. Once you figure out your active range of motion, this will give you a continuum of how low and how high you can set the throne that is comfortable for you. So this is where it becomes preference. Now, as far as weight distribution goes over this system, going into your throne, you do have some choices. So if you put too much weight in going forward or going back on the seat, it will influence how your spine sits in neutral, well, the neutral that you'll be playing in, and then again, what kind of forces are going through your joint. We've got this huge surface area between our vertebrae, vertebral body, and the spinal segment that we want to try to have be evenly distributing force, so to speak. So finding something that's comfortable and neutral relative for you will be important. Now, one of the things that will happen if you try to sit really far back on your seats, you're kind of playing laid back, what will happen is your whole pelvic system will do a posterior pelvic tilt. And now we're back to the original problem we talked about in the first video, that you're getting pulled into lumbar flexion. The lumbar spine is not really good at going into flexion. So for some people, this may be where you start to experience some discomfort or more notice some tension in your lower back. On the other side of the coin, if you're leaning over the pedals to play double bass or you're trying to read sheet music, you lean over and put more weight into the front of your pelvis. This is where you start to get more of an anterior pelvic tilt. Now, an anterior pelvic tilt isn't so bad but it starts to do two things. One, it starts to lock up the articular facets a bit more. So again, you might notice some tension in the lower back. The second thing that happens if you're leaning forward is you actually lose relative hip flexion. So let me explain what I mean. If you're sitting back normally and you check your hip flexion like we did to check our throne height to make sure we're sitting somewhere neutral, if I roll this whole spinal system forward, do you see how this is flexion, femur towards pelvis, and if I roll this forward, it's femur towards pelvis again. It's just kind of the opposite, which end is moving towards which end. So this is still hip flexion. So that means, relative to me, that if I'm sitting on my throne and I'm leaning forward to read sheet music, me leaning forward may actually reduce how much hip flexion I have relative to if I'm sitting in a more comfortable position. I urge you to try this. Lean forward, try and lift your leg off the ground. Lean back, try and lift your leg off the ground. Now, like I said, I'm leaning back, but I'm not leaning all the way back. Leaning all the way back will actually give you more hip flexion, but you're back to that pelvic tilt thing we talked about earlier, and that could put some extra stress through your lower back. So in regards to heel up versus heel down plank, if we're sitting at the drum set here, you guys can see that I'm sitting in kind of a comfortable neutral spine. I'm not lean back too far. I'm not too far flexed forward. And by sitting here, if I check my active range of motion that we've discussed, I can pick my leg up pretty high and not really have too much motion in my back. Now, as far as heel down playing goes, that's going to be probably fine for most of us. As long as you're sitting in a comfortable position and you've checked your motion, it is unlikely that heel down playing is going to have too much motion up in towards your hips. If I play just single strokes between my feet, you guys can see that here there were really no, there wasn't really any motion that happened. It's all happening at my ankle, so the dorsiflexion and plantar flexion. Now, when you get to double bass, heel down is the same thing, right? My hips and knees, you can see my knees here, they are not moving at all. Now, when you get to heel up playing, it starts to be a little bit different, but it becomes, there are kind of two different ways to look at it. Are you playing heel up and using more of your leg, 
or are you playing heel up and using more of your ankle? So if I was playing heavier single strokes with my right foot, you guys can see that my whole leg is coming up and down. Now each time I do that, if you guys can see with my lower back, as I do that, if I'm playing double bass, I'm staying within my active range of motion, but it's not influencing my hips in any way. Now what can happen is if I'm sitting too low and I'm getting into this lifting my leg up really, really high relative to how low I'm sitting, that's when you start getting some abnormal spinal forces. And what will happen is if I pick up my leg and I go too high, I'll flex forward like I showed you in the previous video, but I'll also side bend a little on that side. So you get kind of this thing going on. I'm exaggerating a lot, but it puts that lateral flexion force through your spine. And like we spoke about earlier, not really an issue on the short-term side of things, but if you do it for long periods of time, that's where you could see some uncomfortable sensations in the back. Now with double bass, there's the other side of it where you're playing faster. Like you're playing 180, 200 beats per minute, 16 notes. That's a little bit different, but it's the same idea. You can see that my knees are staying up in a similar position. I'm not really moving too much. But again, I need to make sure that I have that available active range of motion so there's not too much stress going into my lower back. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know what you'd like to learn more about. I'm trying to keep the videos pragmatic and simple and not get into too much physiology at this point. But if you'd like me to go into more detail about anatomy and how the anatomy relates to the mechanics on the drum set, please let me know. I really appreciate you guys watching and please check me out on Facebook, Instagram, and if you have any questions, please feel free to email me.